Hey, this is Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com. And today we're going to talk about an exciting new feature inside of Airtable, their list views. Now, I dare say this is one of the more interesting features that's come out, especially for small and mid-sized market users who are utilizing Airtable. Those of you who are familiar with a tool like ClickUp or Notion, you're familiar with the idea of kind of this list-based architecture. That you have objects and nested inside are other lists and nested inside that are other lists of objects. And it's something that is really simplistic and helpful. It's really nice to be able to see from a UI standpoint. Now, I tend to be a little bit biased against it from an architectural standpoint. I prefer myself a little bit more the relational database style of a tool like Airtable. But in this latest release, this is combining the power of the UI of this list-based architecture with the actual underlying relational database. And I think it's a pretty good marriage between these two. One of the things I'm most excited about is that Airtable's never really had that great of a solution for subtasks. In many other system, you have the ability to have tasks and then nested subtasks underneath that. And there's always been workarounds that we can do, but never something that felt like a really good native solution. So that's one of the things that we'll be talking about in this video. Let's hop into the application. And right now I'm taking a look at a CRM that I have. And I did just want to show you before we had the ability to have list views, we had grid views and we could have grid views grouped by different things. So we group by the account. We're taking a look at our opportunities by the account. And that's fairly useful, except that we don't really see the information about the account up here. Now you could say, well, Dan, we've got the ability to have lookup fields and on the opportunities see the account values. That can be helpful, but it's kind of a waste of screen real estate when you really want to be able to focus on the opportunity record not the account record. And this is where list views come in really handy because we've got the ability to see information at multiple levels. So we can go ahead and click a new list view. I'm going to start by actually showing you one that I built or show some examples, and then we can talk about actually creating them. But you'll notice that the list view is now an added option that you have down there. Let's check out opportunities by account, which is the one that I created. And this is really the same kind of idea as we had up here with all opportunities grouped by the account. But now you can see the UI is a little bit more simplistic. It feels more like a document rather than just a spreadsheet style view with the table there. And we've got the ability to see different levels. These are collapsible. We've got our accounts. We can see our opportunities underneath. And this is where it's really helpful because we can see the actual information about the account because we can configure what fields are going to be able to show at which level. Now, if we take a look, we can see that we have the ability to set these different levels. We have a max of three different levels, but we can also show nested records, which gives us a little bit more flexibility. And we'll take a look at that as well. Another use case, we might want to see an account hierarchy. And there are extensions that allow us to be able to see a hierarchy, but we've never really been able to do that very well inside of kind of the core application itself. And I just set up a quick example here where we can see that we've got a parent account of Bearpaw Inc. And we've got Bearpaw Solutions and Osito Marketing, which are also accounts. So this is a relationship from accounts to accounts. And we can see those nested accounts. This is really valuable when you're dealing with complex hierarchies. Now we can see that information at different levels here. Let's go ahead and talk about how we can actually set one of these up. We'll go ahead and click down on the list view down here. We press that plus button. We'll create a new view. And at this point, you might pop up with a little configurator on the screen, or you might have to manually click it yourself, but you can say, try it. And that opens up this configuration screen. So let's go ahead and click get started. And the important thing to know is that you have to start at the base level. So notice how you can add levels above. There's not a button to add levels below. And so if I'm looking at creating a, a hierarchy of accounts, I can start, certainly start with accounts. But if I really wanted to create it with opportunities at the bottom, it's better for me to start on my opportunities. So let's X out of here real quick. We'll head back over to opportunities. We'll create a list. And we'll click try it here, get started. And now we see our opportunities at the base. Let's add a level above that and we can choose accounts. And we could add one more level above that. Now what's interesting is that Naturally, with this list view, we think about this as a hierarchy, something up at the top and then a middle level and then a lower level. But Airtable lets you be really 
flexible here. As long as there's a relationship, a linked record between these, it's going to let you construct the folder structure or the nesting however you want. That can be a little bit confusing because if we have opportunities, naturally that seems to roll up to an account. But account from here, we could have contacts or we could have quotes or really anything that has a linked record there where typically you wouldn't think of going from a quote to an account and down to an opportunity. So this is both very powerful in terms of you have lots of flexibility, but it's also a little bit confusing because you have to be thinking about how do you actually want to architect those relationships? In this case, it doesn't make sense for me to have a third level here. So we'll show with two levels, but we'll do another example when it comes to project management later on in the video, and we'll talk about multiple layers there. Now we can go ahead and click next. You'll notice that you do have the ability to customize the record name. I mean, probably if you're setting up the table structure the way you want, you don't need to do that, but I like that they're giving us the option to be able to do so. We'll click next, and this is where we can tell it which linked field is it that we want to have. Uh, it's pretty good at identifying that right away. But of course, you could have multiple links between the same two objects. So it's nice that they're giving us the configuration ability there. You'll also see this option for enabling nested records for this table. That doesn't make sense for my particular use case. I don't have opportunities with parent opportunities or child opportunities. So we won't worry about that, uh, but it makes more sense for other situations. And we'll show you that when we get to tasks and subtasks. Let's go ahead and click the next button. This is where we can decide which fields we want to be able to display. And you can reconfigure all of this later on. So if you decide, oh man, I want to add an extra field and then add it into this view, that's totally okay. Very flexible, just like Airtable's other views that it has inside the system. So we could say, let's put our industry, customer status, size, and then on the opportunity, we'll need that estimated value. And we'll need expected close date on there. And that looks pretty good. Let's put a, a roll up of our opportunities value. And we can create that. And that's where we get, it's very similar to the other one that I already created and that you could see. I do like, you know, if you've got something like a roll up field, this is extra helpful because now if you have estimated values and you're seeing those sub objects here, now rollups make even more sense when you've got this kind of hierarchical list view to be able to see different values rolled up. Let's take a look at another example. I'm gonna hop into a different base. This one is more project management focused. And I wanna talk about the ability to have essentially tasks and projects and how we might configure this. I started on the tasks level and I've created one called project list. And I wanna show you just how I architected this. At the very top level, we have our accounts. And from there, I have projects. We can have multiple projects. And already you can start to think, oh, this could be really powerful being able to see information about the account and being able to see everything with the project and then the tasks underneath that. You know, we've got other powerful project management views like Gantt charts, and I have a video about that as well. But to be able to see everything that's going on in this list view, I really appreciate that. We open this up and then we also have our tasks down here. And you'll notice something a little bit different is that we have even something deeper. And this is where we get to those nested objects. And I'll show you what that looks like. Let's go ahead on that set levels. And this is the same thing that you saw on the configuration screen, but this you can continue to modify it outside of that initial configuration. So I started again on the base level object, the very bottom level, I needed to create it for tasks. I think this is one thing that maybe will be a little bit confusing for people because I think of this as I'm looking at a project view, but I don't actually see that if I go to my projects, the view is listed under tasks. So one thing I would maybe encourage the Airtable team to think about is, could we link this from other tables that we have in the system? Because I think it's going to be a little bit more confusing navigationally when you have to think about which table am I going to, to be able to find the list view that I created that encompasses three different tables at the same time. But we've got our project list. Let's take a look at those levels again. We've got tasks on the bottom, then projects, then accounts. Again, each of those are linked from the corresponding linked field. And then one thing that I did differently here is that I enabled nested records for this table and I could tell it which field that was. Now, before we get too into it, I wanna show you what this looks like on the grid view side of it. 
which is that I added a subtasks field, and this is just a linked relationship to itself. So if we open and modify this, edit the field, you'll see that it's just a link to itself, a link to the tasks table, and we're allowing linking record to multiple records to be able to get that relationship. And that's how we'll be able to see the nested objects. The first time I was testing this, I actually did it the other way where I created the parent relationship. I said parent task on there, but that's how it has to be. It has to be more from the parent level and going down in order for that to work. Let's take a look again at our list. So once I enabled that and we've got some data in there, that's how we're now able to see this subtask list. We can take a look at the customized rows. Once we've already set it up, you'll toggle between each of the tables here to be able to tell it which fields that you want to have display. You can add a prefix, which is kind of interesting. And you've also got the ability to show and hide sections. Now, this can be helpful if you're saying, I only want to, to see things that have a child object underneath it. If it doesn't have a child object, I don't want to show that section. So for example, if there was a project with no tasks, we could say, let's go ahead and hide that. If we click out of here, I do want to talk about the subtasks a little bit because it still feels like there's a little piece missing. And I want to explain what that is. So right now you see that we've got these two subtasks, fill out resource request and create calendar blocks for resources. And remember, this is the exact same object type or record type from the tasks table. It's not a separate subtask table. I know it might look confusing because you see this, but I'll explain that in a moment. It's really all coming from that tasks table. But the problem is that because it is a task, I mean, remember, if you're taking a look at it, this fill out resource rec request and create calendar blocks, these are still tasks inside the system. Yes, they are related, but they're still looked at as tasks. So if I go back into the project list, one of the problems that I had, and I love if, if anybody out there watching this sees a solution, I'd love to find out what you did because I've been experimenting with this for a little bit. The problem is that it, it still shows it at the parent level because again, it's just a task. So that fill out resource request and create calendar blocks shows both at the task level and shows at that subtask level that I created. So that's confusing. It's not really ideal. Now, I tried a couple of different things. One is that I ended up just putting the order so they're at the very bottom. So maybe we could kind of just not worry about them because they're at the bottom. Not really the ideal solution. What I really wanted to do was to add a filter here. And what I did was I added a condition and you can add the conditions at different levels. I love that filtering ability. That's awesome. I, I created a special field. And I did this really just to see if it would work. It's kind of silly to create a is subtask field, but I did that just to test it out. So if I said, if it's not a subtask, then we want to be able to show it. Well, notice that that filtered it out. We don't see those two here, but now they're also filtered out of the subtasks out of the, the nested area. We don't see them anymore. So I'd be curious if any of you can find a solution to this, but to me, what it seems like we should have is to be able to have a filter, just like we have level one, level two, and level three, we should have a nested level one, and we could run a filter on that as well. Because right now, it seems like there's no way to filter it because it's really filtering it both at the nested level and at the main level itself. So I ran into that. It wasn't my favorite thing because I'm really hoping this can be our final solution for subtask and handling it that way. Now, of course, the other possibility is, hey, Dan, why don't we just create a subtasks table that's different than tasks? This is not my preferred solution for a couple of reasons. One is because inherently a task and a subtask, it's the same thing. I mean, you've got start and end dates, you've got a status, you've got a description. It seems really silly from a database perspective to create two different tables, but what the heck, let's give it a try, right? So I created a subtasks table and I just added my subtasks to it and I added a lookup to the parent task. That makes sense. And then I was able to create a new list view again where 
This time, let me show you the levels. I've got subtask as the base level. Notice I can't use the nested parts anymore because it's not nested. This is its own object here. And then we've got tasks and then we have projects. But what do you notice right off the bat? That cuts off one level that I wanted. I wanted to be able to have my account up at the top level. And because we're limited to three levels, that means now I have the project at the top level. And again, I could have lookup fields showing from account values. So it's not the end of the world. But I think if you're using this for project management, here's the one thing that just seems a little bit wonky to me is like having these have add subtasks to everything. Because if you're only doing conditional subtasks where only a handful of the parent tasks have subtasks, it just kind of looks silly. And then you're constantly opening and shutting these. I really prefer the way that it looked that we did over here with the actual nesting. Again, let me just pull off that filter so you can see it. Yeah, I just think that looks so much nicer. I'd really prefer to be able to use that. So I think for my own personal use, I'm just going to keep these items at the bottom and just kind of ignore them or or maybe add some kind of prefix to it. You know, have, have some hyphens so that it indents itself a little bit just so I'm aware that I don't need to worry about those. But at this level, again, it's a, a passable solution. It's just not my favorite solution because then we, we knock off essentially one level that we could use. The other thing I want to say is if we head back into our sales example, if we're in a grid view here, it's really handy how we can drag up and down and reorder these really easily. That makes it nice to, to be able to interact with. I find it a little bit more confusing when we're interacting with it from a UI perspective. If I'm trying to reorder something, notice that it's really nesting that for me. And it, that's changing the, the core database relationship as it's doing it. And so it's a little bit confusing to be able to use that. Now, of course, I, I do like the ability to, to be able to add a new task from here, to be able to open and collapse these as we're going on. I, I think that this is going to be a really handy view that people utilize. But the two things that are standing out to me are just the UI interaction of moving objects around, as well as those nested objects that we talked about. I hope this has been helpful for you. This feature has been out for a very short amount of time, so I'm just starting to explore it myself. I'd love to hear in the comments below if you found other features as you're exploring it yourself. If you have any questions or you need help in setting up your own Airtable implementation, feel free to reach out to us at automationhelpers.com for a free 30-minute consultation.